an idea of what we're doing with the statistical inference here. But if you take the sample, then the questions are, you know, can we infer that sample to the entire population and how confidently can we do that? Can we do that with a certain level of confidency? The more we can get numerical data uh, about how confident we are, then the better predictive power we have, the better tools we typically have as well. So practical uh, applications of statistical inference. So clearly the election polling is usually the first thing that comes to people's minds oftentimes. And in that situation, when an election is impending, it is not feasible to ask every single voter who they will vote for. So clearly when you're trying to predict the results of the election, we can't just ask everyone because that's basically we would be taking the election <laughs> at that point in time. So what we can possibly do is have pollsters take a sample, say a thousand voters, and based on their responses, try to estimate the voting pattern of the entire electorate. So of course, they're gonna try to get a sample and see if they can get the data on the sample and infer that results to the entire population. So it is the challenge of statistical inference to extrapolate from the small sample to the larger population. That's what our goal is going to be. So for the medical trials is another common example. So anytime we're doing any kind of scientific, scientific kind of testing, a hypothesis testing approach, which is kind of like the foundational thing that you're going to do in science, <laughs> is, is, is going to be a statistical kind of, kind of test oftentimes, right? So in medicine, for example, in testing a new drug, it is not possible to test the medication on the entire population. So if we're trying to say, is this drug effective? If, I, if someone takes this drug, will it do what we think it's going to do? Well, we can't take the entire population, even the population that is sick with what do is take a smaller group uh, and, then, and then test on the smaller group. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to the testing than this that we'll get into in future presentations because you have things like a placebo uh, kind of effect. And when you get into the pollster testing, you have things like, can you reach the entire population? and so on and how exactly are we going to pick the sample so we'll get into all of those kind of nuances <laughs> in future presentations which are very important nuances they're not just minor things but you get the general gist the idea of what we're doing here so based on the reactions of this group we infer the drug's efficiency and its potential effects on the larger population all right let's take a look at a scenario imagine that we have height data for a specific group of adult men and our objective is to gain a comprehensive understanding of the height distribution for all adult men. Now, height is a, is a good one to test out. Oftentimes, when you're first kind of looking at the concept of this inference uh, type of analysis, because uh, one, the heights normally will come to somewhat of like a bell-shaped distribution. In other words, most people, when you look at the height of men, for example, are going to have, you know, tend toward a middle point. Most people are going to be somewhere on an average height. And then you have uh, the, the distributions somewhat around the average. And as you, as you get towards very tall or very short, then it's a lot less likely. Uh, there's a lot less people that fall into that. Uh, category so it has that distribution that that is kind of a bell-shaped type of distribution also people already have kind of a sense of what the height distribution should look like just from observing uh, people so you kind of have an idea of what you expect to be happening and then when you when you run the testing you can you can kind of see that in your mind